Hey there guys, it's Tara from Raw Food Living, and today I'm gonna show you the food that I purchased and how much I've been spending here on average living in Sweden with my raw food diet. Okay, so before I show you the food that I purchased yesterday at a market here in Sweden and talk about what the food costed me, I wanna say something. A few years back I moved to Australia and everybody said, just wait Tara, you're gonna be so surprised. It is so expensive, the cost of living there is so high. And when I moved to Sweden this time, people said the exact same thing. It's so expensive, you just wait. You think you're gonna be making more money, but actually you're gonna be spending way more so it evens out. And what I have found is that my experience is the exact opposite. And there's a reason for that. Because I see it as two ways of looking at the same situation. I could walk into the grocery store in the small town that I live in called Falstabo that is known to be a ritzy high priced tourist attraction area and I could go, wow this really sucks, Sweden is so expensive. If I want to get a small pack of dates I have to pay $9 or if I want to buy a mango it's going to cost me $4. This is crazy, I don't know how I'm going to afford living here. I could do that and for a lot of people I'm sure that that is their experience of living in Sweden. Or the way I see it is I can explore an alternative, I can try to find I don't know, locally sourced produce or cheaper produce, just explore my other options instead of just taking everything at face value and assuming that it is expensive here because people have told me that it is or because my first few experiences told me that it is. So I chose to explore another option. I found a city that is about a 40 minute bus ride away that I have to go to regularly for work anyways and I found this big beautiful market there and it was amazing. And a lot of the people that I spoke to at the market yesterday are from Kurdistan, other Arabic speaking countries, I'm not exactly sure where, but they have this beautiful big produce market with all of the vegetables you could ever want and when the fruit comes into season, a lot of fruit that you could want as well. And the prices are so incredibly reasonable. And that has been my experience. I decided early on, I don't want to pay top dollar for food, so I'm gonna to try to find a different option. And it all comes down to your mindset in these particular situations. You, you get to choose, is what I'm saying. You get to choose the experience that you have. And it all depends on what you're willing to do to find alternative options. So this is the food that I got. I'm gonna show you close up all the food that I purchased. And I have the individual prices as well for what I spent on each item. What I want to say is all of this food right here I got for $20, which is a third of the price of what I'm used to paying in Canada for the same food. First we'll start with the lettuce, and the lettuce for three large heads of iceberg lettuce, I know it's not the most nutritionally dense, but it cost me 30 kroners, which equals out to $4.50 Canadian for three large heads of lettuce. I found this to be such a great deal because when I make a large salad with one of these heads of lettuce, it fills up an entire bowl and it satisfies me. Next up we have avocados. I was able to get six avocados and what is not pictured here in this close-up video is a bunch of green onions that I got as well and a small spicy pepper. And for those items, for the six avocados, the pepper and the green onions, I only paid eight dollars which is crazy and they're really good quality avocados. Then I purchased three zucchini which worked out to 15 kroner or $2.20 Canadian. Next, I was able to get these two big and beautiful mangoes, and they are huge. Like They are probably some of the biggest mangoes I've seen. And I got these two mangoes for $1 Canadian. It blows my mind. They were so cheap, and the quality of these mangoes here is really good, way better than what I was expecting here in Sweden in the wintertime. I also got three lemons for half the price of what I'm used to paying back home, and I paid $1.50 for these lemons. Then comes the purchase that I was most excited about yesterday at the market, and these are beautiful Italian cherry tomatoes. I bought all of these cherry tomatoes for 30 kroner, which is $4.50, and this is probably about four pounds of cherry tomatoes or even more. The container doesn't look very big, but it is a lot of cherry tomatoes. It will probably last me about five days. These are so cheap and they're so delicious. The quality is so high. I just love these cherry tomatoes. All together, this food cost me $20 Canadian or the equivalent of $20 Canadian. And I'm not making this video to boast or to say, look at all the beautiful cheap produce I have, sucks for you. That's not what I'm getting at. What I wanna show is that just because people tell you you can't find something or you can't do something or it's impossible, doesn't mean that that's the truth. Honestly, I, I really feel like it comes down to your mindset. If you want to find an alternative for affording beautiful food like this, because this is so cheap, you can absolutely do it. I'm not saying that me taking a 40 minute bus ride is anything close to being convenient. 
It's not necessarily, but for me it is worth it to get beautiful produce and also to be able to support people who may not make a great living otherwise. This might be the only way they have to make a living in this country. So I feel good about supporting that. I really think that in most countries there are alternative options aside from just going to the grocery store and accepting the prices that you find there. You can also grow some of your own food. You don't even need a lot of space to do this. There are a lot of videos online showing how people grow food in small apartments or on balconies with very, very little space. And I'm hoping I'll be able to show you myself growing food in the little garden space I have here in my tiny home. So if you enjoyed and appreciated these budget tips and me showing you that there are other options out there, instead of just accepting the status quo, give this video a thumbs up, share and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.